Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrew Gaming Telecom video, Intel have unfortunately revealed that they have no plans on releasing a socketed Skylake with ED RAM, which is a bit of a crying shame. So, why is this? Well, it's not been 100% clarified, but enthusiasts are not particularly enthralled by this. Intel's previous generation chips, known as Broadwell, some of them did have ED RAM. More specifically, the i7-5775, for example, which actually had a considerably lower clock speed than Skylake. The 775 ran at a turbo of about 3.7 GHz, but the base was about 3.3. Now, the real, the real kicker here is that because of the ED RAM, sometimes the 5775 would actually beat out the Skylake hardware. Now, you might ask yourself, why is this? Well, ED RAM actually can act as a level 4 cache for not just the GPU, which is actually a mistake many people make. Many think people associate the ED RAM just with, you know, the GPU side of things, when in actuality this isn't the case. And Intel have made sufficient changes, significant changes actually, which allow the ED RAM to act as an additional layer, layer of uh, cache for the processor. Now, unfortunately, this is not the case for Skylake, at least for traditional desktop socketed parts. And indeed, there are sources which were speaking with the tech report, and they said we may see a revival of socketed desktop parts with ED RAM as part of next year's 14NM KB Lake refresh. So, we are in this weird situation where we're not quite sure why they didn't do it, whether it was time constraints and they just didn't have enough, you know, basically they weren't sure whether they could actually fit the thing into their schedule, whether the actual chip itself, whether the ED RAM would just be too big and they don't think that they could manufacture such a large die in large enough scale with, you know, good yields, or whether it's just that they're holding it back purposefully for the future because at the moment they don't feel they have a good level of competition. ED RAM stands for Embedded DRAM and is typically integrated onto either the same module or die as the actual processor itself. It is worth noting that ED RAM hasn't just been around for Intel. For example, uh, the PlayStation 4 did indeed have ED RAM, it used up to 4 megabytes. The Xbox 360 had ED RAM as well for its GPU and actually allowed for really good anti-aliasing and for other graphical effects to be considerably cheaper without needing to farm off that data to the unified memory, which is of course the 512 megabytes shared between the CPU and the GPU. Now moving back to the actual performance here, when one considers that the 5775C um, is only running with 65 watts and only runs at 3.7 gigahertz compared to the 6700K which runs at 4.2 gigahertz and the fact that it's a newer architecture, one can start to see just why ED RAM could be rather tantalizing, particularly if we could have it for an enthusiast part and then pair that with say a high-end GPU, for example, the, you know, an R9 Fury or something along those lines. It is a bit of a shame to be honest with you, I think Intel could probably find a way if they wanted to. It possibly is time constraint based, but I feel that if they had more competition, they probably would have maybe delayed the Skylake processors or just launched the damn thing with ED RAM. Obviously, in some applications, this is not the case. In applications which aren't so memory intensive, um, it's not such a big deal. Uh, for those which require pure IPC, then obviously clock speed matters. So in not all tests, certainly the uh, ED RAM enabled chip will easily sell through with one that's um, got a lower clock speed. Now once again, I'm not necessarily down on the 6700K. Some people really have panned Skylake and said it's a massive disappointment and it's you know terrible chip and all of that stuff. And, I once again have, I don't believe it's a terrible disappointment, but I don't think it's lived up to what the hype um, led us to believe. And I, I kind of had that feeling when I was hearing that it was only going to be a four core chip again. 
I obviously wanted to believe that it was going to have considerably better IPC and all of that, but it just didn't. So right now, the 5820K is still, for many gamers, very tantalizing, very, very tempting. But if you are purely gaming, a 6700K is certainly not a bad chip, especially when, or even a 6600K, especially when you start factoring the cost of motherboards and all of that stuff. You know, a 6600K, it's not that much more expensive than, let's say, a Devil's Canyon, a 4790, or even a 4690, something like that. Unless you're going to reuse really good DDR3 memory, let's say you've got slow DDR3 memory, or maybe a small amount of DDR3 memory. So if you start factoring upgrade prices at the moment, DDR4, as many of you know, is fairly cheap. So once again, I'm not insinuating by any stretch of the imagination that the that uh, Skylake is a bad CPU, but it could have been a really good CPU if a few changes have been made. But I have a feeling that most of this is going to be saved for either KB Lake or its follow-up, uh, maybe even Cannon Lake. Personally, once again, to reiterate, I'm really hoping that AMD do release a really killer GP uh, CPU combination with Zen. We all know that it, they are working on APUs as well for their desktops, which have quite a bit of potential with, let's say, HBM2 with Zen cores and a decent amount of GPU cores. It could be quite nice. I guess all we can do is wait and see, unfortunately. But for now, I'm going to get going for anyone wondering what I've been doing most of today, for the three of you who probably care. Um, primarily, I have been setting up Metal Gear Solid on the PC and figuring everything out so that's basically ready to be recorded for tomorrow. Uh, I've been trying to record Batman because the patch has been released but on my version at least previously it was loading now it's just refusing and I've tried a different, couple of different driver updates and it's just crashing so I've tried for a couple of hours to record that actually about four hours with different driver configurations and stuff and it's literally just crashing on me. So, what I might have to do is, well, try a different set of GPU drivers entirely, maybe reinstall the entire game for the upteenth time, and, I don't know, do some basic fault testing. To be honest, I might try it on a different system, because I'm pretty much unsure what else to do. So, for me, at least at the moment, at least on AMD, it doesn't seem to like it. I've tried a couple of different drivers, but, yeah, well... We'll get it working, I'm sure. I've got to say, from the time before the game crashes, it does definitely play a lot better. But it does seem, from what I've looked at Steam, it's a bit of a problem. Some people have not been able to play the game after the patch, and other people are reporting that the game absolutely runs smooth as butter. So, who the hell knows? Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.